working out doesn't have to just be about burning calories or, or, or trying to make the number on the scale continue to go down. You really need to focus on what exercise is doing overall and how, like I said, how it makes you feel. Those endorphins are important to pay attention to. Also, the energy boost that you get after a nice workout is something you should pay attention to or the the sense of accomplishment that you feel when pushing yourself to do something challenging and, and raising that intensity of your workout. Live your best life while working on your health and fitness goals. We're here to make your journey fun and inspiring. Welcome to the V-Shred Better Body, Better Life podcast. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Better Body, Better Life podcast. Uh, I am your host, once again, Vince Sant, and today we are going to be diving deep into a topic that I think a lot of us kind of overlook when we're trying to lose weight or just get in shape and try to keep the weight off, and that's your mindset. Because a lot of people might be thinking, well, I mean, I know I need to eat right, I know I need to work out to lose weight, obviously, right? So how big of a part does mindset have to play, right? And to be honest, mindset has everything to do with this because your thoughts will dictate your your actions and your actions will dictate your success. And so without having the proper mindset going into it, it doesn't matter if you have the perfect diet laid out for you or the perfect workout plan laid out for you, you're not going to stick to it. And so that's why today I want to share five powerful mindset shifts that you can make starting today or this week to lose weight as fast as possible. And in a way that doesn't suck so that you can actually stick to it long term and actually keep that weight off. And these are some of the same strategies that I've used. These are some of the same strategies that we've used with countless clients to help them not only reach their goals, but also just to maintain their results because it's obviously no fun to lose 20 pounds one month and then gain it all back the next month. So with that being said, let's jump in. First, I want to talk about the importance of focusing on progress rather than perfection, because I think a lot of people get all caught up in trying to find the perfect plan for them and trying to go all out from the beginning. And what ends up happening is a lot of people end up burning themselves out. Right. And this is a big one for most of us um, because we get caught up in the idea that the only way to get those results is to do it that way. That's the only way that you're going to lose weight. Right. We think that if we have one cookie or we have or miss one workout that somehow we've already completely failed and we might as well just give up. Right. And then that's that creates that snowball effect where if you miss one workout or you have one bad meal, now you miss two workouts. Now you had two bad meals. Now, all of a sudden you look up and you've been missing for like a week straight. The thing is, the the that all or nothing mindset is going to sabotage you. It's going to destroy your chances of success because truth is, everybody messes up. Everybody um, has these little slip ups, whether it's with diet, whether it's with workouts, whether it's with whatever you set a goal for. You're going to have days where you don't necessarily stick to it that well, or you do something that you weren't planning on. That happens. That's just called life. That's just called being a human. Um, and that reminds me of one of my favorite quotes. I'm a quote guy. Uh, perfect is the enemy of good, which means nobody's perfect. And expecting perfection from yourself is just setting yourself up for disappointment. It's setting yourself up for frustration because what usually seems to work better for most people, if not all people, or at least our coaching clients, is to focus on the progress that you're making overall, the progress that you're making day to day, not perfection. And so celebrating those small wins. Did you choose, I don't know, a grilled chicken salad over a greasy burger for lunch today? That's progress, right? That's a small win. You made a good decision. Celebrate that small win. Did you take the stairs at work instead of the elevator? That's progress as well. And so and, and, and these, might, these things might seem small. They might seem meaningless, right? But every single one of those small decisions adds up over time, and it also will lead to other good decisions. If you wake up and you have a healthy meal for breakfast versus an unhealthy meal for breakfast, what you're going to do is you're going to remember that healthy decision that you made for breakfast and then maybe have a healthy decision for lunch. And then if you have two healthy meals, maybe a third healthy meal before you end into your work day, now all of a sudden you might go, well, I've been on a roll today. I'm going to go hit the gym today because I'm feeling good. Rather than waking up in the morning and you stop at McDonald's on the way to work, and now all of a sudden you feel like a piece of crap because you weren't planning to eat McDonald's in the morning, and but you did. And now all of a sudden you're like, well, I already had McDonald's, so I'm going to have pizza for lunch. And that just leads to this, like I said, the snowball of making bad decisions, right? And so all those 
whether they seem big or small, all those decisions that you're making, all those choices that you're making will add up over time. And so instead of beating yourself up for not being perfect all the time, celebrate the small wins when they happen. And then don't, like I said, don't beat yourself up when the, the, the misses happen as well, because they are going to happen. That's part of life. And so make sure that you're giving yourself credit for the effort that you're putting in, even if that means you're missing a few things or you're messing up a few things along the way. Those things that you do mess up are going to continue to happen over time. It's not like you're going to mess things up once and then you're never going to do it again. You're going to mess things. I mess things up weekly. And so that's that's normal. And that's when I'm like on my A game. still. sometimes you're going to mess things up daily. That's OK. OK. And so even though um, and, and also the other thing to remember is that and this is one of my favorite quotes. I'm a quote guy is that progress is never linear. Okay, I like to remind people of that all the time. And it doesn't matter what you're trying to achieve, whether it to be lose weight, whether it's to, I don't know, run a marathon, whether it's to make more money, whether it's to start a business, whether whatever it is, you're not going to progress every single day. You're not going to progress every single week. Sometimes you won't progress every single month. And so you have to make sure that you understand that. That way, when you don't progress, you can still tell yourself to stick to the plan and trust the process. Because eventually, as long as you're putting in the work every single day, and you're doing what you should most of the time, more often than not, you're going to continue to progress over time. It just might not happen every single day, like I said. And so when it goes back to the dieting and the fitness aspect of life, dieting is about making lasting lifestyle changes, not setting these rigid rules that you can never falter, alter from, okay? So it's about finding the, the, the plan that you can actually maintain long-term, not for days, not for weeks, not even for months. I would say this is for years, you need to find something that you could truly see yourself doing probably for the rest of your life. And it might be tough in the beginning. Everything's kind of tough in the beginning. Um, but over time, as long as it matches your lifestyle and it's it's getting you results over time, um, then it should become easier because I've always said that like as you start to see results, it becomes kind of an addiction. And I think that's the perfect explanation of fitness and how people go from never working out to obsessed with the gym. We've had clients who didn't go to the gym at all. They were 200 pounds overweight. And then all of a sudden they lose a bunch of weight and they want to become a personal trainer. That's because they saw the changes happening and it became addicting when they started seeing those results. So moral of the story for this first tip is just don't beat yourself up over the, the, the small failures and celebrate the small wins, I think, which brings me to the next mindset shift, which is to embrace the concept of balance. When we start a fitness journey, it's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that we have to go all out. We have to cut out all the foods that we love. We have to eat nothing but chicken and rice and broccoli for every single meal. But that kind of restrictive dieting is not only miserable, but it's also not sustainable. Because when we deprive ourselves of the foods that we actually enjoy eating, eventually we're going to get crazy cravings. And eventually we are going to binge eat, right? That's just what happens. It's impossible to ignore your hunger hormones forever. And if you're eating the wrong foods and you're not having the right macros, if you're following some fad diet, your hunger hormones are going to be all out of whack, especially if you're not getting sleep, if you're not doing things to manage your stress, if you're not doing the things that you need to do on a daily basis, then it's going to build up over time until you crack. And so instead of doing that, focus on finding a balance that works for you. That means, and I always like to follow the 80-20 rule, that means allowing yourself to enjoy your, your favorite foods or uh, missing workouts and giving yourself grace when you do that 20% of the time. And then still prioritizing nutrient dense, low calorically dense whole foods that other 80% of the time. And so as long as you follow that 80, 20 rule, you're doing what you should be doing most of the time, which is going to get you results over time. Like I said, it's not going to be linear, but it's going to get you results. And so um, making sure that you are learning uh, more about yourself along the way, learning what, li what what works best for your body. So listening to your body and then giving it what it needs to thrive as you gather those learnings. And some days that might mean having a slice of pizza because, because your coworkers are having a pizza party on Friday and that's the 20%. That's the, the life style that you want to enjoy sometimes. Am I saying have that pizza party every single day of the week? Absolutely not. But if you want to enjoy your Friday with your coworkers because that brings you mental happiness. That's important too. But then, like I said, most days that might also mean that you're loading up on lean proteins and vegetables and fruits and um, healthier carb sources and whole foods, right? And so doing that most of the time allows you to enjoy that pizza 
and have it not destroy your progress. And so, yeah, don't pig out all the time. Um, the key is to find that middle ground that feels truly sustainable and enjoyable for you and that doesn't knock you out of balance. Because, yeah, I mean, once you start eating healthy, and I found this to be true, and I've, I've heard a lot of people say this, they found this to be true as well, is once you start eating healthy and you like kind of get over the the hump of like, I miss X, Y, Z foods, and also you shift to that mindset of like, oh, I can have them sometimes. Once you start eating healthy, all of a sudden you start feeling better. You have more energy. Um, you don't have these cravings that you had before. Maybe your skin clears up a little bit. Your body's starting to show it. And all of a sudden eating these healthy foods isn't as much of a hassle anymore. All of a sudden you're like, whoa, this is actually really nice. And sometimes we've heard clients say that like when it comes time for a cheat day, they don't even want the cheat day because they know how bad they're going to feel after they eat that unhealthy food. But you have to trust the process long enough and you have to actually commit to the process to experience that. Like I said, listen to your body. And speaking of listening to your body, by the way, um, that'll actually put us perfectly into the third tip, which is trusting your hunger. We've talked about hunger a little bit already. Hunger cues are an important part of, it's just a bodily process that is super important to listen to. Um, and a lot of us have gotten used to kind of ignoring our body's natural signals, um, whether it's, I don't know, uh, eating some chocolate when we're not really hungry or pushing through hunger because we're on a new diet and we don't think that we should eat yet because we're saving calories for a later meal. But one of the keys to sustainable weight loss is learning to tune into those hunger cues and honor them, right? That means eating when you're truly hungry, right? Not just because it's time for a meal or because you're bored or because you're stressed or because you just want to pick at something, right? It also means stopping when you're satisfied, not stuffed. And I'll call out my mom on this one, love her to death, but whenever we're having like a big family meal, she will just eat until she is miserable, right? You do not want to do that. There's a, there's a, there's a line, there's a, there's a, there's a line that you hit where you go, okay, I feel good. I'm, I'm not really hungry anymore. And then a lot of people eat beyond that until they feel absolute, they feel like crap. They feel like they need a bigger pants. They feel like they need to go lie down because they're in a food coma, right? You want to avoid that. And so learning to recognize that feeling of comfortable fullness, it takes practice. And it also takes resilience because sometimes you do want to continue to eat more food. But the more you do it, the more in tune with your body you'll become and the easier to become to sustainably lose weight. Another mindset shift, I think this is our fourth one, is reframing your relationship with exercise. Okay, we've talked a lot about diet and so I wanted to make sure that we're touching on working out as well because for a lot of people, I think workout is probably like the probably the easiest just because like you just got to go do your workout, right? Diet, there's a lot of confusions around it. You're not sure what you should be eating. It, it's 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 much more complicated than just going to the gym and and maybe doing some of the machines or a lot of people like to go do cardio. And that's another a talk for another day. But for a lot of people, this exercise, it may be easier, but it also feels like punishment for eating too much. Right. Or for or maybe this workout is a way for them to earn their calories or earn their food or they go, they eat dinner or, or they eat breakfast, whatever they've eaten that day. They go to the gym afterwards and they're like, I need to burn 500 calories today. Right. And that allows them to feel like to feel good about what they've eaten. Right. Because they burned their calories. And that kind of thinking can just make it really hard to stick to a consistent workout routine. You really need to focus on what exercise is doing overall and how, like I said, how it makes you feel. Those endorphins are important to pay attention to. Also the energy boost that you get after a nice workout is something you should pay attention to or the, the sense of accomplishment that you feel when pushing yourself to do something challenging and, and raising that intensity of your workout. Working out doesn't have to just be about burning calories or, or, or trying to make the number on the scale continue to go down. I don't even track calories when I work out. I don't think most people should track calories when you work out. I think you should have a proper workout routine and you should stick to that workout routine and you should work out with intensity. But just sitting there and being like, I'm not going home until I burn 600 calories because I need to, because I want to eat more food. That's just a horrible relationship with your workouts and with your calories. It can be about celebrating what your body can do even, right? Like a lot of times people are really limited 
by what their body's capable of doing or injury history. And as you work out more and more, a perfect example is actually my dad who followed our move program. He would do the, he, in the beginning, he couldn't do jump lunges. And then by the end of it, he could do jump lunges. And so something as small as that is something that you need to be aware of and celebrating as you continue to progress down your workout routine, because those little, again, it goes back to those small wins. When you have those small wins and you celebrate them, it's going to be more enjoyable as you continue to do it. And when you start to see exercise as something that benefits your overall well-being, not just your waistline, it becomes a lot easier to make it a regular part of your life. And so once you do this, you'll notice that you start to actually look forward to your workouts because you're looking forward to how you're going to progress next. Or like for me, it's always like how much weight I'm going to be able to push or, or how lean I'm going to look or like putting in the work for two weeks from now or especially with like my endurance stuff right now as I'm training for races I'm, I'm trying to watch my times go down and so I'm really focusing on uh, progressing in my own way and so you have to figure out what way you want to progress and that's healthy for your mind not just I want to see the scale the weight the number on the scale go down yes you probably want to see the number on the scale go down but to make that your sole focus that's just going to set you up for failure Finally, I want to talk about the power of self-compassion, which I think kind of is tied into everything that we talked about today. Um, but it's also something that I don't, I don't feel like gets talked about enough in the fitness world, but it's really, really important. But most people are too focused on like, oh, stop bitching or, or, or work harder or no days off. And they're all about like working, doing more, right? It's never about like, hey, give yourself some grace, like we're we're off we're already our own worst critic. All of us are constantly just almost talking bad to ourselves about whatever it might be, our insecurities or how we look or um where we're at in life, whatever it is. But it's especially true when it comes to our bodies and our eating habits and our activity habits. We beat ourselves up over every single little thing that we think is wrong or something that's perceived as failure. And that negative self-talk can be incredibly demotivating. But what if you treated yourself with, and I've said this before, the same kindness that you treat your best friend with? What if instead of beating yourself up for <clears throat> eating that croissant that your colleague brought to the office or beating yourself up because you skipped the workout because you were tired, you just reminded yourself that you're human. And like I said, progress is not always linear. And then also going back to the 80, 20 rule, I said, this ties into pretty much everything. 80% of the time you do what you're supposed to do. 20% of the time, give yourself grace, right? And so when you approach weight loss with self-compassion, you're more likely to forgive yourself for doing the things that you think are absolutely wrong. And you're more likely to stick with your plan for the long haul. And you're less likely to get discouraged by those temporary setbacks that are actually much smaller than you probably realize. So yeah, have more self-compassion, be your own number one cheerleader, celebrate your successes along the way. Imagine if your friend missed a workout and she was all beat up over it and you were like, Hey, life happens. Okay. You just make sure that you get back to your workouts tomorrow. That's what you would say to your best friend. So say it to yourself. Okay. Um, and if you need a hand with the mindset part of this, along with the actual physical, like root, like planning of a routine part of this with like a customized meal plan, customized training plan, um, I have V shred certified coaches who can literally take all of the guesswork away from you. Um, and we have some coaches available right now. So if you do want somebody in your corner who you can contact whenever you want with any questions that you have, or maybe you want adjustments to your diet plan, to your training plan, or maybe you want some help with mindset, then all you have to do if you want to check that out is hit the link down below. There should be a link somewhere, wherever the link is, hit it, um, check out the details. But either way, I hope today's episode was um, helpful. I hope you learned something um, that will serve you for the rest of your life. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of V Shred's Better Body, Better Life podcast. Whether you're doing one of our programs, taking our supplements, or just doing things on your own, tune in every week for exclusive content with Vince, V-Shred trainers, and special guests as they share valuable tips around motivation, workouts, food, and living a healthier lifestyle. See you next time.